Yes. Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Tetsuo is our friend. If anyone's going to kill him, it should be us. This is episode 220, recorded November 17th, 2022. Gruesome Magazine. My name is Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-hosts Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Uh, joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. Crystal, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> is it good? <laughs> I'm still eating <laughs> Halloween candy. Yeah, okay. Wow. Y'all are oh. going to think this is gross, but it's chum, milk chum, milk I milk. like milk duds. Milk duds? Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't know if likes milk I mean, Thank you. I love okay. Because I get. Yeah, absolutely. There's there. a reason. I, I love them. And like, I'm happy that they're still around because no one else eats them but me. You know, like I yeah. can just eat a few pieces of candy and then like be done with it. Well, everyone okay. else. Yeah. It's always good to have that that candy that no one else but you likes. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you just keep Halloween. the mountains oh, coming my way. Yeah. <laughs> Halloween was two and a half weeks ago. That, that stuff would have been gone in like two or three days. <laughs> well, we do go um, after Halloween and buy bags too. Like the fifty percent oh, okay. off. Yeah, go. that's the time to get candy. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. Half a and then store it till next year, so it's nice and hard. And milk we'll make a difference popcorn. with milk duds. <laughs> milk, <laughs> milk duds <laughs> never go bad. Milk duds and movie popcorn. Mm-hmm. I'm just oh, saying. Oh my god! And if you, Chad, have you ever like wrapped them up together? Like yes. literally? Yes. 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 See, mm-hmm. high five. Yep, totally. Mm-hmm. Pat, pat, totally. pat, 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 pat. So good. Chad knows what's up. Also, also with us tonight is Chad Hunt, <laughs> comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the all of them. How you doing, Chad? Wishing I had some milk duds. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, I feel bad. Yeah, I'm going to have sketty after when we're all done. But mm. sketty. Um, mm. Last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru. Co-host of decades of horror the nineteen seventies and uh, a nice guy most of the time, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all around nice guy. I'm all sorry. Nice yeah, guy. how you doing, Bill? <laughs> I'm hoping I got some Neko wafers because that's how I roll. No, that'll be oh, oh heck yeah, absolute worst. I'd eat them. Mm-hmm. I got. I'm playing with a new computer now, which is giving me giant hands. As long as they're not seven. I think they look more giant to you. Oh it really? Look, they, it looks they look normal okay to me. Oh okay. <laughs> Yeah. These hands look like they're twice the size of my head. They could cover his whole head. Well, I mean, all okay. right. Now, <laughs> hey, now I can't see Chad. It's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but right? Isn't hey, that normal? Jazz hands will be a whole new dimension. That's that's all I'm saying. Um, yep. <laughs> on this podcast, we start out by giving some basic details of the movie we're covering. Uh, Followed by taglines, take a look at the posters, and kind of discuss. We got a lot to talk about this movie. Um, Spoiler alert. Yeah, we're we're going to talk about everything. We we don't censor ourselves. So uh, if you haven't seen this movie, you should go take a look at it. So our uh, pick tonight is Akira, or do we say Akira? I say Akira, but that may be wrong. I've always said Akira. Akira. Akira, yeah. Akira. Um, and I, I I will probably butcher these names, but I don't really want to. It came out in 1988, uh, written and directed by Katsuhiro Otomo, who was the uh, also wrote the manga mm-hmm. and drew, I think. Yes. Uh, had a couple assists, or had an assist on the uh, writing from Ito Hashimoto. It was released... In Japan, in July 16th, 1988, not until June 28th, 1991, in the U.S., the budget was 1.1 billion yen. Uh, that was estimated to be around 8 to 10 million, depending on who you talk to, I guess, which was a record sum for a Japanese animation film. Domestic box office in the U.S. and Canada was 553000 
and worldwide 2.5 million. Uh, but I'm sure this thing has made its money back uh, since then. All the different editions that have come out, etc., re-releases. Synopsis is a secret military project endangers Neo Tokyo when it turns a biker gang member into a rampaging psychic psychopath who can only be stopped by a teenager, his gang of biker friends, and a group of psychics. Close. Yep. So this is a, uh, this picture is a piece of uh, Neo Tokyo. And this is, mm. I could, I, I literally, I was talking with Chad about this other stuff. I, I couldn't decide what images to use for this thing. I had made like seven of these uh, and still couldn't decide which one to use. Uh, but I went with this one because of the colors and the detail going into the background. There's a lot of shots like that. Even in, uh, there's one in an alley that I just think is brilliant. But, it's beautiful. Uh, it's darker and not as colorful, but yeah, this is this is cool. And I know Bill's got some shots of this yeah. too. Um, so yeah, this is pretty cool. Yep. Uh, I'm excited to talk about this. Um, so in this case, it is... Now time for I'm sure there's a headlines right there. With I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, we'll find I was out. Like... We'll find out. Hmm. We'll find okay. out. Hades uh uh yeah, we will find out. Uh, <laughs> if all we do is sit and look at the screen and you don't hear anything, whoops. Yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway, Chad, we got a bunch of taglines for this movie, don't we? We do. We do. And do I have well, to read all of them? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, you know, if you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, signal trace to Tokyo. Is the first tagline, and okay. I have no idea what that means in regard regarding this movie. But anyway, second tagline: a state of the art adventure. It certainly is that. Yeah, that's fair. Give it, give it that. Uh, tagline number three: thirty-eight years after World War Three. Dot dot dot. Which means it took place in. 1988, because this movie is supposed to take place in 2019. I remember World War III. It was it was yeah. terrible. Yeah. yeah, it was fought with milk duds and yeah. popcorn. Yeah, <laughs> they kept it a big secret is and didn't tell the stupid people because they figured they couldn't handle it. You know? Can you can you guys hear me? Okay, milk duds. Milk yeah. Duds. yeah. All right. Okay. 2019, Neo Tokyo, a never-ending puzzle begins. The trump card is dot, 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 top secret, dot. Filmed to be treated as hazardous material. I, I, that, you sound like you're rambling. I, I, I felt like I was rambling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Maybe something got lost in translation. Maybe. Yeah. I'm thinking that's the issue. Uh, okay. The definitive science fiction masterpiece. This is an unmissable anime classic. Well, at least that's true. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know that they can say that before people you know, yeah. see the movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bold statement. Yeah. Uh, next one is martial law declared. Exploding energy. Exclamation mark. This wow. year's number one most dangerous film. Okay, no. Okay, we're rambling but, again. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This is uh this is a bad translating yeah. of uh of Japanese uh taglines, <laughs> I believe. 2019, the year before the Neo Tokyo Olympic Games, dot dot dot. What did the boys <laughs> see that night? What is the ultra top secret project slumbering underground? The year's most controversial film has arrived. Hmm. You ask a lot of questions. Yeah. yeah. That have Without nothing any to do question really. marks or not enough. Oh, no. Dot, dot, dot. Question marks. 
I can a lot of that. dots. Well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Neo Tokyo is about to e dot x dot p dot l dot o dot d dot e dot. Ex mm. Oh, explode! Oh, okay. yeah. that's that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and the last tagline for the movie Akira is "The end of the world was only the beginning." Uh, okay. Yeah. I kind of like those. Are the, one, those actually. are the. Those could possibly be the worst taglines yeah. for one of the best movies ever made, I believe. Yeah, I agree. Possibly, possibly. Well, let's uh, jump right into first impressions. And this is Chad's pick, so we're going to let him go Good first. Job, Chad. Yeah, finally yeah. you come through. <laughs> so tell us about this. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, are you? Hold on, let me wet my whistle. Oh, okay. that looked like Windex. What the hell? It might have been. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're one of, one of those guys. That... <laughs> I first what saw this mo this movie, um, and I, I I don't think it was the 90s yet. I don't know if the 91 was the actually the year. I thought it was 89 I actually saw this. But I think it was a... Um, it could have been a bootleg at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. So I saw this with a buddy of mine who had it and he was hyping this up big time saying, this is, this is the, you've never seen a, a cartoon like this. You've never, you've never seen animation like this. And I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. Whatever. And uh, have you ever seen uh, the Herculoids? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I saw this and it, completely blew my mind. I mean, this is one of the only movies that I've ever seen where I was actually sitting there with my mouth hanging open the whole time going, how did they do this movie? Um, not only was the animation ages beyond anything that we've seen here in the States uh, or I, I had at that, at that point in time, but the, the story uh, was excellent. The characters were, I love the characters in this film. Um, the story of the, the two of Kaneda and Tetsuo um, and that friendship that they had. And, and it was just great, great stuff. And it even leaned into body horror a little bit. And which that was very cool. The, the whole confrontation with Tetsuo um, near the end of the film was just, mind-bogglingly bog good uh, and great. And I, I love this movie since I first saw it, and I love it now. And it just and it seems to get better every time I see it because you always notice something different in it. There's so much going on in, in this film. Um, it's just um, a treat to sit down and watch it again for this. Yeah, yep. I, I'm mm -hmm. glad you picked it, too. It uh, let's hear from uh, Crystal next. Okay, so um, I don't, I wasn't a kid when I saw this. Before. Well, I think I saw it the first time, like, hmm, maybe it was, it was a while ago, but I mean, maybe it was like 10 years ago. Yeah, probably like around 10 years ago. Um, and I have some of the comics or the manga or whatever you know i have actually have quite a few i was thinking about trying to bring some out for this but i was too lazy so anyway um i i love this film i mean i didn't get to see it you know i mean i've already seen i'd already seen you know comics like you know or or, or cartoons like this or manga like this so it that, in that regard it wasn't anything quote unquote new, even though it was new at the time when it came out, but I love the story. I love the character. It's so weird. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. And I, I love it for that. I mean, those kids are so creepy. <laughs> those kids are so creepy looking. Okay. Like those kids mess with me. I just, I do remember the first time after watching it, I was like, oh God. Mm, ew, ew. Oh God. Cause they're like, you know, they look like gray yeah. little hobbits or something it's very odd um 
Oh, the psychic, but I like the, the psychic ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I, I like the relationship um, between all of the characters and everything. I, I, I mean, what, what's there to say? I mean, it's a totally different sort of film. It's, I'd, I'd be interested to see where, you know, the culture was at the time of this writing because they see it seems to be like such an oppressed society, and I'm sure that is partially based on you know some of what they were all actually dealing with um yeah i i mean of course the story's great the, the animation is great this really the story though for me is the best i i think every time i've watched if i remember everything i've seen has been dubbed i don't know if there is a version where there's like subtitles but i'd kind of be interested in seeing that the dvd the dvd that came out a few years ago has a uh, has it in japanese language because I would love to, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you seem yeah, yeah. To get what the original. It's a lot angrier. Oh, I would. I, I bet it's really good. Mm -hmm. I bet it really gives you a, a feel because, I mean, honestly, it's kind of scary how the one dude takes such a turn. It it, it kind of like, I, I always forget the names. I'm really bad, but you know, Tetsuo. Tetsuo. Yes, thank you. That's it. That's him. Mm -hmm. He. You kind. I kind of want to hate him, but you really can't. Because well, you understand why he was that yeah. way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what's so, mm -hmm. it's like, ah, uh, it's such a, I think that's what makes you, I think that's what makes really successful characters. Maybe mm -hmm. it's like, you don't want them to be all bad or all good sometimes too, because sometimes that's annoying. So yeah, I just, I think this is, I now would I recommend this to all, to horror movie fans? Some, but there's a lot I wouldn't. I know a lot of horror movie fans don't like cartoons or wouldn't watch it or wouldn't want it because of that. And that's that's fine. It is what it is. But, I mean, there is some horror elements here for sure. And oh, yeah. it's creepy. And, I mean, how they yeah. just shoot the one dude in the street. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, just as an FYI for you viewers out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bill, I have you go first, but I'll let me interrupt you for just a minute. There's a... Uh, What's IMDb has really poor information on uh, yeah. receipts. So I'm looking at Wikipedia has a huge chart for box office performance and under gross receipts at the bottom worldwide says 49 million. Um, 1.9 billion yen in 1988 in Japan. So right there, it made it back. Yeah, because the the cost was one point one billion. So, yeah, uh, that worldwide number was, which would put it like, uh, if one point one was uh, ten million, uh, that's going to make that close to like around eighteen million, something like that. So, and then on down the line, and even in the U.S., it does list nineteen eighty nine and a million dollars. So I don't, I don't know the numbers, the the, the figures yeah. in uh, IMDb are not good. I go by this uh all right bill sorry to interrupt you but i just uh, want no, to no, correct I, that i, I know there's there's yeah. people at home that are actually writing comments already right and then afterwards you know, they go, the exchange oh, ratio you for corrected yourself yeah yeah um i so. figure it made its money back but there was no sequel and they're usually big on sequels although i'm glad there wasn't because this told the story it needed to tell but as i understand it's part of a massive manga story mm -hmm. that has and I'm glad I didn't get into it because I hear the people whenever you read the reviews that complain this got left out and that got left out. It's like, geez, come on, mm. folks. You know, that's that's what happens when you adapt it's, things. It's a I ma it. massive, uh, massive, uh, yeah. Manga I, I can't there. say when I first saw it when, when I was back in the early mid 80s or so when I was in, um, oh, it was complicated, but where I was, there was a college where people were getting anime sent to them from missionaries in Japan. And we would get together once a month and watch them. This was in Japanese. And this was 80s anime, which is really confusing, even if you can understand what's going on. And we didn't. But there was some amazing stuff. A few films I hope we do in the future, like Vampire Hunter D and Wicked mm -hmm. City. Just some amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, so I got into it. And um, I'm not as into it anymore. I guess it's part of that thing, whatever you're... You, first get into is what you think of as the perfect you know style and it's moved on from that but i love those 80s uh anime films i finally got a copy of this having heard about it and i guess it was also in japanese 
I only like to watch anime in the original Japanese with subtitles. Um, that probably takes away some of the viewing experience because you're reading instead of, you know, letting the visuals flow over you. But I just, I usually end up hating the dubbing. It's, it's rare. The, the Miyazaki films are an exception. They, they have had some really good voice acting but I'd much rather listen to it in Japanese. And it's weird after a while when you're, when you're reading subtitles, when I remember it, I don't remember them speaking Japanese. I remember them speaking English because I was reading the words and I somehow put that together. It's a beautiful film. Um, anime is, is an interesting style. It's not the full animation of say a Disney film. It's not the completely limited animation of, the American TV shows at the time. It's sort of in between. There's sometimes, you know, a lot of scenes where people are speaking, there's not a lot of uh, motion going on except for their mouths moving. But the backgrounds and the, the design and the colors are so breathtaking that they, they take your mind away from the fact that things, you know, the camera's not swinging around. Frankly, I prefer it that way. So uh, it's, but and this one has some, it almost looks like computer generated graphics, but I don't think they had really anything like that back then. So mm -hmm. it's, it gives you that, that it certainly would be done that way now were they to do this and it would cost a whole lot more than 10 million. This was all hand drawn. Yeah. It's, it's great. Right? And you know, watching it now you begin to realize, I don't remember this film really making a huge splash at the time, but boy, was it influential. I can't imagine the matrix existing without Akira. And how many times have we seen some variation of that one shot when Kaneda's on the on his motorcycle and slides to a stop? Mm -hmm. I mean, that looks like whoever some guy saw that as a kid and said, one day I'm going to make Fast and Furious movies until the end of time. It's it's just it's a it's an amazing film and, and it's a bit of a slow burn in the middle. But boy, when Tetsuo assumes the mantle of godhood. That movie, this movie flips a switch and does not let up. It's uh, it's really something. I mean, it's got it's got some of the tropes of anime. It's unrelenting. It's brutal. Don't fall in love with any particular character. Just because someone doesn't deserve to die doesn't mean they're not going to die and die horribly at that. And I'm thinking, I'm still in trauma over what happened to uh, Tetsuo's girlfriend. I totally did not deserve this horrifying fate. Mm -hmm. but that's anime, uh, you know. No one's, nobody's uh, off limits. Pets, kids, all kinds of stuff. This movie's a bloodbath. I keep forgetting just how gory it is yeah. until I watch it again. I'm like, man, we used a lot of red making this one. Yeah. It, this is this is an amazing film. And yeah, I'd recommend it to anyone who can get over the fact that they're watching a cartoon. And if you're one of those people who just like, bah, 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 cartoons, yeah, okay, there's no hope for you. Too bad. You're going to miss a lot of great stuff. I mean, 90% of anime is crap, but there's a lot of anime out there. So that 10% that's great, that's a lot of films. And you're really mm -hmm. denying yourself some gorgeous pieces of work if you uh, just write it off as the next big thing. You know? So, yeah, thanks for picking this, Chad. I wouldn't have even yeah. thought of it, but it was a great pick. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bill. Um, same, with, same with me because uh, I literally think this is the first anime i've seen in terms of a of a movie or, or watching a full thing i i don't know if you call astro boy anime or not but i watched sure. astro boy back in the 60s but that other than that i hadn't seen it and this will give me something to talk to my uh 11 year old granddaughter about because she's really into it and has always drawn characters she went as some manga character and uh that's awesome for halloween um so yeah, this thing had all kinds of different releases and things. And the the I'm completely with what Crystal said because I got I had to I, first I watched it online and then I went I gotta find out more about this and picked up the Blu-ray. Uh, but it has I, it's the Funimation is one is the one that I got that has mm -hmm. two different uh, English dubbing versions and one with the original Japanese. And like it always is, you know, like even when you're watching the dubbed ones, the subtitles don't match the dubbing. You know, they they say they've translated it differently. But I really liked the Japanese version a lot better. It felt more like 
the, the characters felt more powerful in for some reason in the in the dubbing they sounded more like bratty kids almost you know like juvenile i know they're supposed to be sort of juvenile delinquents but yeah. i don't know it, it, i don't know and no no hits on the on the voice actors or anything but i just i was just blown away by this so the colors the animation some of the shots we could talk about those as we go there's a couple of well there's several scenes that are just like it just keeps going and going and going it's crazy um anyway uh and this actually came out uh, a uh, uh 4K version was released to IMAX in Japan in 2020. Wow. Um, Criterion did a laser disc in 1992, back when that was going to be the next big thing. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm really glad you picked this because I never, I never ever would have watched this on my own. I don't think, uh, Chad. So let's dive into what some of this other stuff that we got here. So this is the uh, this is the poster yeah. I saw the most. I don't know how many there was. Um, I like it. It doesn't give anything away, yeah. but it tells you what you're in for. And it's got everything from the movie. It's you know I hate those ones that are like some random stuff. Yeah, doesn't even have anything. To, nope, they got the same outfit. No, we got it's some sci-fi, right. cyberpunk, and there's letters drawn with blood. Yep. That's your warning. So were you already doing comic work, uh, Chad, when this came out, or was this before? I, I was just getting into it at, at the time I yeah. saw this, yeah. And uh, I think I own the DVD version, and this is the cover for the DVD version I, that I came out. I think oh, that's wow. the cover of mine, but it's still out there by my player still. Uh, it's interesting because there is a DVD with it. It's got a Blu-ray and a DVD, and then an extra is... And unfortunately, one of the uh, extras on the Blu-ray, I think it was some kind of history of manga or something. I don't know what it was because there's no sound with it and it didn't have subtitles. Hmm. Uh, it's like, you know, some documentary 30-minute thing they picked up somewhere and added to it. And it's, it didn't didn't come through. But anyway, um, very that's cool. And that is like the world's coolest motorcycle. Oh, it, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This movie somewhat reminds me of uh, Mad Max and Road Warrior in, in the way it kind of makes a fetish out of the motorcycles. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. way they did with cars. But I, you could see why. I mean, if those things actually existed, I'd sell everything I had just to run around the world. Well, there's, uh, I actually saw a, a version of this motorcycle, a workable version, mm -hmm. a few years ago at a show. They had it at a show somewhere, and it ran it ran you could ride it and everything it's and uh, it was amazing people were flipping out over it. oh yeah mm -hmm. I, I you could buy these that jacket too i mean that stuff's when you search akira on uh yeah google the first thing you get is uh, a bunch of ads and stuff at the top i, I didn't get the, the thing at first but i guess i'm understanding the, ga the, the gang is called the capsules yeah they're they're That's drug the pushers yeah and and I, I think they, the one of the things that might be an improvement over the manga, I mean improvement, I haven't read it, but I think I have a feeling the characters are a lot more likable in this movie than they were in the manga, yeah. from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. The uh, the jackets that they have for sale has text in a circle around the capsule that says "Good for health, bad for education." <laughs> right. I mean, anyway. fair enough. Yeah. There are a bunch of other posters, uh, one of which has a like a glowing, uh, I guess, nuclear explosion. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was hard has, to find. Uh, it was hard to find posters that were actual posters. When you look for Akira art, you get a lot of fan art. I mean, mm -hmm. and it was hard to say which is which is the real and which is inspired. Uh, but this is the poster I remember. Well, yeah, and so is that. Is that? Do you think is that the original one? I think the original one was um, Kaneda standing there with the laser, yes, the laser rifle across yes. his chest. You're right. You're right. 
I'm just quickly pulling a couple of these other ones up here just to take a quick look. Yeah, that's a good the, great uh, poster too. That's an awesome poster. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. and then uh, this is the one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. That's a good one too. I. It's just a great character, and the. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys tell me about uh, about animation because I I don't really know anything about it, but I felt like they used, you know, it was it was like a cinematographer was there, hmm. you know, with yeah, the moving yeah. camera and camera angles and stuff, as opposed to, you know, no, no, that's that's very accurate. In fact, watching it, you think I'm thinking to myself, yeah, this is a big budget anime movie because a lot of them you know they they cut corners it would make sense when you've got to draw every dang thing it's not just a matter of turning on the camera and shooting something you're shooting a, a landscape you got to draw the landscape so you know maybe you cut down how many individual shots you have but no this one this one if this had been live action i would have said this is really well made well edited well composed and everything and yet, ironically, they keep talking about making it into a live action movie. And I think if they do, it's going to suck, 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 suck. Uh, so. I do too. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Eesh. Ready to be proven wrong, but I don't think I will be. And when so you think some, about uh, when you think about hand and drawn animation, I did. Um, I used to work for Disney when I was in Florida, and I did. I worked for a division that did educational films for school, and we did hand drawn. Uh, cell animation and um so you say you wanted to show a drop of blood dripping down you'd need 25 drawings of that blood dripping down to make it look that good it's like frames per second in in, in filming um right you'd have to have a billion drawings to make that look so realistic of just a drop of blood falling and splattering on, on yeah, the ground. It's insane. So when you look at the detail in some of this animation, as, as, as far as dust flying around and uh, just some of the grotesque stuff at the, at the stadium at the end, um, it, to make it look that smooth and that it just takes, it takes a billion drawings. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, that's what I appreciated the most, the most about it is the work uh, that went into that. Um, he, they must have had 100 people or 200 people working on this uh, at the same time uh, in order to get that. Yeah, this stuff is the, the Neo Tokyo stuff is awesome, I think. I mean, the colors and the, um, the, the, the building of the city. Mm-hmm. But it also works, you know, thematically, the, the contrast between the absolute beauty of this technology and then the lives of the people that are working there. It's it's very yeah. you know, corrupted and broken yeah. and dirty. Blade runnery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blade yeah. yeah. You know. yeah so you have, you have this stuff in really this kind of the upper levels when you get down to the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost like a ghetto in some places. And it, and hasn't that been a theme since, you know, you go all the way back to Metropolis? Yeah. And, you know, the same thing. Uh, you know, we, we gain all this technology yeah, yeah, to yeah. lose our souls. But boy, that, cool that's slot. pretty. I wouldn't mind living in Neo-Tokyo. I wouldn't mind looking living uh, in Neo-Tokyo if I lived in that place. Mm -hmm. If I got to walk around in this uh, animated Blade Runner world. I don't know. I mean, they just decide to shoot people on the road to cops. Yeah, well, stuff. there's the, not yeah, exactly there's... the kind of world you want to live in. Just saying, yeah. mm. it's totalitarian. It's a nice horrible... place to visit, kind of like Vegas. But I bet the people that live up in the top of those buildings in the back don't have to they're worry fine. about any that, of that. They're fine. That's yeah, fair. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Um, so our lead, I think, character oh, is it Canada. Is it, yeah, is it Canada or is it Tetsuo? That's Canada. Or it's pronounced Canada. I've heard people pronounce it Canada. Yeah, the, the, the version people... I just watched was in Japanese, and I kept cracking up every time they called him Canada. Mm. Um, I, I've <laughs> always said Canada too, but that's the way this dub. Was. Yeah, Canada. They were they would yell out real loud. Yeah. Anyway. Canada. Um, 
he's a good protagonist. He's not. He's by no means a perfect hero. He's kind of a doof. Mm-hmm. I don't um, actually. I don't like him. He's sort like, of a Jack Burton like kind of character. Ever. Yeah, he's a, yeah. He's, he's a he, dick. When, it, when he's it's time to be dick. brave, he's brave. But otherwise, he's kind of a yeah. moron. No, yeah. he's a dick. Like he's still mean to him. He's like, mm-hmm. oh, you feel right. small. Oh, boo hoo. I was like, damn, you're <laughs> such a dick, dude. Don't like, no, tease the godling. It's like so, it's like no when to shut your mouth. No when to just ugh. Like characters like that. Super he cool. was he was as much into uh, being the big shot as. Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that's why I can't call him a protagonist because he's not to me. Uh, he's are... he's a prote- he may not be a hero, but he's a protagonist. I... But these frames are great. I love. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the action and the emotion and the po- you know the, the the body positions and everything. Mm-hmm. It's just. He's seen that, that his motorcycle, that motorcycle shot at the bottom in Batman cartoons. Uh, yes, uh, yes, seen, seen it in a yeah, lot of different yeah. things. It's so iconic for this because it was so cool. The first time you saw it on screen, you didn't, it, you never really saw anything like that before, mm-hmm. and it was just so cool. So he's the he's the he's the head of the capsules, I guess, the gang, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of. So. He, um, he t- yeah, he told he he definitely is. He makes sure everyone knows it. And he's got the mm-hmm. best motorcycle, which I think is how you get to be leader of the gang. Actually, it's just having yeah. the coolest motorcycle. Yeah. And if you can be meaner to everyone else in the gang, apparently. Yeah, that's pretty much what. What did he? Doesn't he tell Tetsuo that? Uh, you know, if you, if you don't like your motorcycle, go steal one like this. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even earn it. I, um. So Tetsuo is the I. I you know he's it's it's a weird. Both of these characters are like uh, have are equal parts. I think good yeah. and bad, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. they're yep. they're well fleshed out. Uh, Tetsuo, apparently Tetsuo and Kaneda were in a boys' home together, mm-hmm. and it depends on how you look at it. I guess one of the memories is Kaneda helped him and protected him from the bullies and showed him the yeah. ropes. And the other side of it was. Uh, he ribbed him all. The time. He wouldn't let him do anything himself and belittled him. And He's he was he was his that. big brother. I mean, each that's the role I think they had is that even though they weren't related, uh, Kaneda was the big brother and Tetsuo was the little brother. And I don't know if this is true for for Japan, but I've seen you know from students I've worked with in a lot of Asian cultures, the brother relationship is a really interesting one and one that lasts for life, and and not always brothers don't necessarily actually have to be blood brothers but that older brother calls the shots younger one does what he's told older one is also responsible for the younger one uh, you know and has to take care of them for life i mean it's it's an interesting way of doing things and here that makes sense here Mm -hmm. yeah things get flipped and now this kid's got all the power and i guess that is another one of the themes in the movie is what happens when you're given power we always say power corrupts and ultimate power corrupts ultimately and sadly and i agree with crystal it is sad you understand where this mm-hmm. kid's coming it from and everything but he becomes evil a monster yeah you know? I know it's too bad really well, Boy, it, that's it, that's a great a shot on the bottom there that is just the, the mm-hmm. whole thing with the cape where he just tears this piece of cloth off and throws it around him right Man, that works. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, and it's something like a kid would do. It's what a kid would imagine a superhero is going to be like. I need my cape. And and now I've got it. And when things start to happen, the cape flies up. And wow, does it just give some visual punch mm. to everything. Well, and he gets his, well, well, I'll look at that. We'll get to that later. So this is after he's already kind of yeah. well along his, his transformation, right? Oh, his yeah. Shots. Um. Then there's uh, Kay. Kay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and she's the uh, love interest. Kaneda uh, goes after her the minute he sees her. Yeah. <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah. she's involved with the. It, it's mm-hmm. interesting to what's going on here because you got this. You had this uh, government. Uh, you've got revolt against the government, and then you have. Ryu and and her that are trying to um, 
They're uh, trying to overthrow I, I, it. Yeah. Yeah. They're, tr- yeah. They're, they're trying to infil- infiltrate it and then overthrow it. And um, so that, and those were good characters too, Ryu and, and her. Uh, it was hilarious the way Kaneda kept saying, oh, I, I think you would normally call me her girlfriend, but I don't think we haven't done anything yet or anything like that. And they were, the guy said, shut up. You know, and, and you know, held a gun. Yeah. He was in way over his head. He didn't know oh, what yeah. the hell, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Uh, you know, one of the, it's a, in a, a lot of ways, this is a very cynical movie. You, everyone's vying for power the bureaucrats, the government, the military, the revolutionaries, Tetsuo. And I think one of the messages is whoever gets it will abuse it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it, so there's you, no good ending here. You've got the science guy who's going to like destroy the world in the interest of yeah, uh, discovering something new. Mm-hmm. And then you have the government, which I can't figure out the Supreme uh, Executive Council. Um, yeah, they were useless. They were like they were like the government bureaucrats in um, Shin Godzilla. Yeah, just yeah. absolutely worthless. And, just there to line their pockets. Yeah, and then you and then you've got the the rebels that are out on the street, and they're pro, you know even the religious cults that are proclaim, proclaiming Akira the the enchanted the supreme one, mm-hmm. uh, and then. But the guy Ryu isn't he? I thought he was working for one of the guys on the council. Because he comes he, back he, to him, and he comes back to him and gets shot. Yeah, yeah. Tells him we failed, and and uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't know exactly what the corruption goes their, deep. Yeah, it's it's everyone's. Uh, and, yeah, and then the military. Yes, yeah, so you've got science, military, government, and and uh, the the population. I guess what's going on with them? You know, it's all it's all rolled into there and yeah. making for havoc. I think that's a running theme in a lot of Japanese films is the the banality of the bureaucracy bureaucracy mm-hmm. that they have to go through and, and and Bill brought up Shin Godzilla. Boy, there were some scenes in there that that drove that I'm home. Watch that again, yeah. Um, yeah. big time. Um, but as, as far back as this, it was still, I guess it was still yeah. a thing. Go go all the way back to Kurosawa's magnificent Ikuru. Um, is I think that's how it's pronounced, Ikuru. Um, yeah, bureaucracy in Japan seemed to have a long relationship and one that nobody seems to like, but it continues. So, mm-hmm. so we've but talked Japan, about that even in uh, yeah. uh, the, the 60s ones we've done, like uh, Goki, the Body Snatcher, and mm-hmm. what was the other one we did? Um, oh, the the uh, Mont- Matango. That yeah. oh. It's like they have this standard group like whenever there's a group of people thrown together, there's always like a scientist, a teacher, uh, a, Yakuza. Um, a corrupt yeah. businessman, a corrupt yeah. government guy. And I, there's, there's these standard characters that uh, crop up and represent these different facts. I, I like I the way they, a lot. I really, I like did too. Uh, I, the way the little, the three little, like, I think they're called espers. Yeah. Um, sort of controlled K to kind of tell the narrative a little bit and, mm-hmm. and um, push the, pu- push the plot forward a little bit. I thought that was a cool way to do yeah, it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. They're, poor so little things. They're so creepy. They are. They're so creepy. So supposedly that's from all the medicines and the experimentation they've done on, on them that made them. Well, and that's why. Well, that's just, otherwise they had sweet no, little voices. No, I'm not going to let and, you do it because he didn't want to become the same thing as them. Yeah. He didn't want to yeah. take the medicines and become like them. Yeah. Right. And they had tattoos. They had numbers tattooed on them, you know, that was like 25, 26. And I don't, I don't know who the, the guy in the, uh, hover chair, what his number was, but he's um, funny. Actually, he just seems like some grumpy old man. Like he's so funny to me. Yeah. They do. They, they seem like the kids that age too fast kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. mm, Yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, and they're interesting because they act like kids, you know, to a certain mm-hmm. extent. They're scared and they're mm-hmm. um, not real sure of themselves, but then they kind of get together and figure out, hey, maybe if we work together, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, I liked I liked Kay because I felt like she was very uh, 
self-sufficient and very mm -hmm. self-motivated. You know, there wasn't anybody like that. I don't know. And then here's the other, uh, this was uh, oh, yeah. Tetsuo's being crushed by, uh, what was her name? Tetsuo. Akemi? Um, Kaori? Kaori, Kaori. Kaori yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I remember the first time I saw this, I couldn't believe when they killed her. It's like, Oh God, there's, mm. she's obviously dead. I was just waiting for her to get rescued and, um, no. And then I was like, Oh, right. I'm watching anime. This, this kid was treated very badly I in this know. movie. Yeah. The whole and she's an innocent. She's, you know. Yeah, yeah. She's no nothing. She be, yeah, she becomes a blob yeah. of blood. I mean, she just gets. She's, yeah, she's she's abused. She's a, you know molested. She all the only thing that, you know, she just loves this guy for yeah. no particular reason. He doesn't treat her any much better than anyone else does. And uh, for all that, now once. Her death is pretty much the the line where there's no coming back for him, and he seems to know it. I mean, that mm. even as far gone as he is, the fact that he accidentally, you know, without wanting to, kills her is, you know, he knows there's yeah. no hope for him at that yeah. point. That's when he starts yelling for the medicine. That's when yeah. he starts yelling for the, you know, for help, and it's too late at that. Help point. me. I can't control it. Somebody help yeah. me. I can't. Let her go. I can't. Which is a terrifying it. thought. You have all this power and you can do what you want. And then you realize suddenly the power is doing what it wants. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, this is what happens to him. You get, you know, mm -hmm. the, that whole sequence where his arms cut off and then it, it, uh, first it changes to a, a bionic just, arm kind of. Yeah, he kind of reforms it. Like he did that. Yeah. He yeah. He that. reforms okay. out of what's lying around and it's like, Hey, it's even better. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to mix up with sinews and veins yeah. and stuff, and these tendrils come out into the rock, and then, and, and then it just goes. I don't know what the heck. What what you what do you call that? It's just giant. Uh, it's like it's like a uh, super fast growing malignancy. It just yeah, it's mm -hmm. just sprouting stuff all over the place. Like a around. sentient tumor, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just a cancer. Shocking. First time you see it, it's kind of shocking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, it's yeah. visually amazing. Absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. When I again, when I first saw this, and like I say, the movie flips that switch. The music just gets really awesome, and mm -hmm. you feel, you know, this sense of awe. They really, they really get that across of what's happening here. The the music in this was incredible. Yes. Yes. Uh, the with the bells and the the little drum beats and and sometimes complete silence. Yeah. Uh, it was just amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That's true yeah, for some yeah, of the best anime movies. I, I, Ghost in the Shell has one of the most amazing soundtracks as mm -hmm. well. Yep. A whole nother. I just. It's cool. Learning stuff. Oh, well, here's our. Uh, I don't know. I guess he's a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, of all the bad guys, I kind of like this guy. Yeah, he, he was a no was, nonsense guy. He was just yeah. a, a no nonsense guy. I don't think guy. he was a bad guy. He didn't waste mm -hmm. any time when they tried to arrest him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shoot him. I mean, Shoot you him. know, look, is is he? Is well, he, he was a, trying to save the world. I mean, he's trying yes, to save yes, the world. he was. He's willing so to break like, a few eggs to make the omelet, but at least there'll actually be an omelet. He's working yeah. with a bunch of complete useless corruptocrats, and and he's cynical. But you know, the the thing that I think tells you that he's not really a bad guy he seems he seems to have a genuine affection for the espers for the little kids and they yeah. they yeah. don't fear yeah. him the way you know he treats them well yeah he feels yeah. bad for them now he's someone i i'm pretty sure if he ha felt he had to smother them with a pillow to save right. the city even though he hates mm -hmm. the city and the people in it he would do that mm -hmm. he you know he's got that sense of loyalty he's got admirable qualities i guess he's about as good a person as you're going to find in neo tokyo which is probably an indictment of neo tokyo yeah but i like the character i like his character a lot mm -hmm. me too you know so part of the difference with the the uh the dubbing is uh probably it, it according to some some of the information it was one of the first japanese anime films to have the characters voices recorded before they were animated oh, so they could match the animation to the voice and i saw a 
clips of the dubbing and they're obviously trying to match the motion of the already drawn character. So that right away gives you a, mm-hmm. a different feel, which is a problem with almost all dubbing, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, it, that, that always surprised me when I hear that um, you would think it would be, that's exactly how you would do it is you would record it first. And that gives the yeah. animators a sense of how, how broad do I make these expressions and things, you know, you know, that, that's well, what they did with I Robin Williams. Do, and they usually record their face as they're saying it, too, I think. Hmm. And then they can kind of base the animations on them, even like their expressions and stuff. Yeah. That makes the most sense. You know, it does. Like, I don't know why you do it any other way, but. Another piece of information is there were 160,000 single pictures. Wow using 327 different colors 50 of which were created for the film and that comes out to like uh 21 or 22 frames a second out of 124 mm-hmm. so yeah a different picture for every frame that's good mm-hmm. and that's more than you usually have um especially these days but it's good stuff yeah, it's, it's it's gorgeous yeah it is it is. So what else what else do we want to talk about here? I I what about the ending? I mean, what the <laughs> what was happening there? I took it as you know, Tetsuo became a god of another universe that this you know created a a new universe just that and maybe that's how ours created too, with you know, one of many. I don't know. I felt like uh, it was it a like transcendental a big uh transcendental thing. Well, Akira sort of reformed himself and took um, the three kids with, he went in to help and they rescued um, Kaneda, um, but sort of took Tetsuo and the three kids with him mm-hmm. to another dimension or another universe or something. Because they didn't like belong that. there, yeah. really. Like the kids did neither. Even yeah. the kids said, we can't survive out here, you know, when they first, they shouldn't have been there. And mm-hmm. they knew it. I mean, but they were okay. They yeah. knew they were also not bad. Like, they weren't out to do harm, you know. I mean, so there was no reason for them to die. But being taken away was probably mm-hmm. for the best. Hmm. Almost like they all transformed into another or went into another plane of existence. Or Well, they talked about creating the creation of another universe. And that one thing uh, was it Tetsuo shrunk all the way down to this little, yeah, die. you know, from a giant ball of energy down to this little dot that he put in, yeah, in his hands. Um, but what were your uh, did you guys have, did you have a favorite scene or something where you just really went, <laughs> whoa, uh, this is impressive, you know, or or uh even if it was character development or something um, my favorite was the destruction of the bridge <laughs> it was just so brutal oh and then watching that that the uh the religious leader just you know hanging on for dear life and then being taken oh, out by a car the- <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yes when the, when when, when <laughs> the sound, <laughs> the sound that did when she was coming by and you know how he grabbed her and she's like I wish I could remember what they said. Oh, but the voice that they yeah. used. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, that's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. People were dying left and right. They're just so dying left and right. Oh my God. But, uh, I died. I was I was like, what is that thing? What is they, them, she, whatever it was? I, I was like, what? oh, okay. I, get it. I guess in the manga, that's a much more yeah, it's a no, more major prominent. character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it just was so so weird, so funny. Yeah, there's no way they could have crammed the whole manga into no mm-hmm. into this movie. And I, a lot of people, like I said, this is my favorite anime, and and, like, and this got me from this. I went to uh, Vampire Hunter D. Mm-hmm. From that, I went to Wicked City. From that, I went. All wow, you Apple. and I, you and I had the same. Yeah, uh, yeah. Apple Seed. Uh, you know all those, and then I just kind of fell out of it when it stopped getting away from that sort of action 
sci-fi action thing. I did. I didn't feel like they made too many more movies in that vein. This is uh, this is the problem of getting of you know getting into something on the classics. You mm -hmm. watch the and you're like, this is the greatest thing ever, and then you realize you've just watched the best. Yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of other stuff out there, but it's never gonna. It's like that first shot of heroin. You're never gonna capture yeah. that feeling again. It's uh, it's always gonna be. Yeah. Not that I really know about how what the first shot of heroin is like, but I've been told. <laughs> I know people. I know people. <laughs> but it it I lo I get a lot of people telling me when they say, "What's your favorite anime?" and I say, "Akira." Um, they roll oh, their that, eyes like, "Oh, oh yeah, that, that's, that's, that's there's ten times better than that." Well, well, not for me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. It, yeah. It, 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 not for me. This is my favorite one, and I don't. There's not many that can beat that, yeah. and uh, it, like Bill said, we got in on the classics right, mm -hmm. right when they were good. So, well, it's a great pick, and I don't care. You know, we never really get too deep into the uh, what is horror debate, but when you're talking about the end of the world and different dimensions and creation of gods, that's yeah, pretty horrific. I, I think, think a giant uh, cancer baby running around slaughtering people left and right qualifies <laughs> as horror. Uh, John, yeah. that's me. I'll, that's the hill I'll fight on. Dismemberments, um, mm -hmm. shootings. Uh, yeah, there's some, but if there's Chad some horrible doesn't stuff. It, uh, Vampire Hunter D will be one day on the horizon because that's that's pure. That's great sci-fi horror. Yeah, and uh, yeah, fun stuff. So this this kind of opens the gates. Uh, I'm pretty a couple sure. of years later, maybe around the same time. Oh, so I, it might. I feel like it might have be been. I feel like it might have been a, a few years or earlier. I, I well, think I might have seen it. I hope it's eighties. They redid it. They redid yes, it. They, they, did. they made a couple of eighty five. There's an eighty five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then there's a uh, there's a bunch of other ones. Yeah. Two thousand one. Wicked cities. <laughs> Nineteen ninety nine. Oh, yeah. Wow, well, let's let's do a Rutsuga Doji and get banned forever. So. Uh, yeah, we'll never be on the air again with that. Yeah, that'd be the end of that. But yeah, um, you know, there's there's some interesting man, there's comedy, there's romance, there's sci-fi, anime. Well, Crystal, did yeah. you have a favorite scene? Uh hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, I hmm, I don't know if that's my favorite scene. <laughs> I kind of like honestly, I like kind of like everything about this movie. If I'm if I'm being real, but oh, <laughs> I, I I don't have a favorite scene, but I'll say some things I particularly liked. Okay. Um, I really I I mean, it's I know it's just right at the beginning, but I really like them fighting the clown, the clowns. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wanted more of that to be honest with you because I hated the clown. They were yeah. like, it was an awesome sequence. Yeah. Such pieces of that, that was but that I, was my favorite. I like the one. way it was shot. It was really, yeah. That, oh, good. that was okay. the first time where I went, Holy crap, well, this is gonna be yeah. great because that's that's pretty early, right? It's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the thing that really got me was the crash in slow motion, yes, yeah. with the guy yes. tumbling. Mm -hmm. I, I just went. <laughs> And remember, guys, hand, hand, drawn, awesome. hand drawn, hand yeah. drawn, yeah. hand drawn, yeah. slow motion. Where do you, you know? Yeah. But you know, they. I think one of the things that impresses me about it is they fleshed out the clown characters so well too, and they're really nothing. They're just ancillary characters. They're irrelevant ultimately. But I feel like just how they each had their own individual look, and you know, I, mm -hmm. I was, I just find it impressive what they did mm -hmm. with. Every every frame mattered. I feel like you know. Well, yeah, yeah. But, it did. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I kind of liked uh, the the other thing I liked was uh, Yamagata, Yamagata, the the the, the taller <laughs> one that was sort of yeah. his, he was oh, the one yeah. that was ah I'm gonna punch you out every time you know and he'd always <laughs> shout and stuff at the cops and get everybody yeah. in trouble and yeah, uh, <laughs> but he, he gets it too. Yeah. Hey, there, there's another scene that I, I, I feel like has been referenced a lot more recently when uh, Tetsuo is sort of having his visions and the toys come to life oh, and are these yeah. terrifying. You because know? of her, because she's doing that to him. Mm -hmm. I think she's, is, isn't that what that means? Isn't that what that is? She's getting into his head. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's her toy, technically, the bear. But that's right. creepy. Yeah. 
Well, I thought each of the kids kind of. Yeah, each of the kids her. was in one of the toys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The teddy she bear was in the van. Yeah. in the car. Yeah. And what is that goo? What is that stuff oozing milk. out of them? Milk? Milk. No. No. Don't know. He said, so he said it was milk. It. Okay. Mm. Okay. He said it was milk. Blech. Okay. Blech. Blech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't like milk all that much. It's kind of gross when you think about it, but. <laughs> uh, and then there's another sort of a uh, younger boy named, uh, I think his name was Kai. Uh, that's got sort of brownish hair. That he's always running after him, trying to catch up with what's yeah, going Kai. on. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he jumps, he climbs up the thing at the end. Oh, Kanina, Kanina. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a it's a good uh, list of characters, and they each have mm-hmm. their own personalities and functions. And you've got yeah, because it said I don't know anything about it other than it said that the the manga kept going until 1990. So, yeah, it, it, yeah, it went for a long. I mean, it's a long manga series, so it couldn't all be in there. And there's so much in there to begin with. It's just like right. mm-hmm. it's really dense. I, I, you know, I do this. Often I read anyway, like the first I three them. or four volumes, and I never picked it back up again. It was just very, very. I felt like you had to really be paying attention to what you're reading, and it, yeah, and yeah. I just multiple I, books. Yeah. I should. Yeah, I, I kind of had to even do that with the movie. I watched it several times, and the last mm-hmm. time was with the uh, in Japanese, um, which I liked a lot better. It gave me a lot better yeah. feeling for the characters, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway. Great All right, any, any last things we want to hit here? Go watch it if you haven't seen it. Come uh, on. Yeah, oh, I, I would think everybody who's into this has seen it. But if you're a horror fan and you're you're saying like oh these guys are talking about Maybe. anime, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, give it a shot. Give it a shot. I think I think you'll you'll like it. Oh, there's yeah. and there's blood all over the place. Oh, Granted, yeah. it's uh, monsters, uh, and they also use some uh, CGI in the uh, you know that that glowing the glowing yeah thing the doctor Resonance. was matching the patterns right. or whatever yeah. it was right very uh, early cgi very early i was CGI. gonna say yeah. i was like did yeah. they have cgi then <laughs> like no and they did that on purpose because they wanted it oh, to I seem guess they did yeah out of... it is interesting when you see like old movies that were just sort of playing around with cgi you know there was young mm-hmm. sherlock holmes and the great mouse detective, you know, and, and you're like, oh, okay, that that's interesting. It looks very out of place with everything else, but then it just took over because cheaper, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, instead of, I mean, I'm sure that means they don't have to draw 160,000 mm-hmm. something frames, mm-hmm. which is. Yeah. And, but there, you know, but you know, and maybe one day the computers will get good enough that they can fake the imperfections of the human hand. There's just something about, reality that looks better there's a reason why i love stop motion more than even you know most really good cgi there's a reason why john carpenter's the thing looks better than the uh you know technically flawless thing remake the monster effects there Mm -hmm. you know there's and and maybe maybe this is just me because i'm old Mm -hmm. and i grew up on that stuff and everything but i know i just i just think most people would agree there's something Mm -hmm. about reality that resonates with our eyes and our yeah. brain we, we, we need that it. tactile yeah, yeah. Feel, feel it, to it everything. has a feeling mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yep so there was some uh i don't know if you'd call it it's not really computer animation but it is i guess i would call it computer graphics in that they use computers to figure out uh the dynamics of objects moving through space and tumbling and stuff oh that's very smart uh, that's, i saw that was the uh, the director said that um because See, that's that's wisdom having, having technology in conjunction yeah. with other things mm-hmm. having having taken some dynamics classes in college you get like uh i probably have this wrong now but like 12 variables in a, an equation to describe the action of a body so there's placement and velocity at least nine maybe nine anyway enough to make it complicated as hell and you get these all the time in the old stuff. You see where things are just out of whack. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not it's not moving right. All right. Um, 
Well, if that's it for this, go watch this. It's oh, currently, yeah. as we record this, it's on Tubi, and mm -hmm. it's also on Hulu. Yes. Yep. Oh, yep. I watched it on Tubi. I didn't realize it was on Hulu. I wasn't. I think I saw it on Hulu. Hulu. Wonder how different the versions are. Well, the one I watched was in Japanese, so there's that. Oh, nice. Darn. Okay. I wonder if it gave you options. Sometimes it, it might it have, and I'm just too but, yeah. dim to figure that out. But that's no, what no, I'm no, stuck no. with anyway. That's good. Um, all right. Watch it. Watch it. If, especially Watch if you it. haven't seen any anime. If you're if you're a big anime fan, you probably sure uh, or say, "Well, why didn't you talk about this? Why didn't you talk about that?" <laughs> Uh, because we only have this much time. But you know what? There's a lot of anime. There's an anime club at my school, and I've asked yeah. some of them about the ones that I consider classics, and they're like, "Really? Let me let me write that down." I'm like, what? You, you know? But look, they they grew up with hundreds and hundreds of anime titles out there. Why should they think yeah. of something from 1988? I don't know anything about it other than you know my granddaughter was drawing these things and her and her parents got her some sketchbooks and it's just it's it's pretty good i think you know i mean uh and, and it looks cool but it's a lot of the uh doe-eyed right. girls you know with the yeah. right. curls flowing More just here and there so um anyway well let's uh let's move on then we do have some feedback tonight yay Crystal, we have one for episode 217, Lady in White. Lady Circle Woman 3. That's a nice name. Yeah, this is it, one of my all-time favorite ghost stories. Totally worth watching. Totally agree. Totally. I liked it. I had never seen it before. I was I really enjoyed it. I know. It. It's such a great, it's such a great movie. Yeah. Appreciate that. Special. Madam Circle Woman. Lady Circle Woman. Lady. Lady Circle Woman. I'm sorry. Uh, Bill, we have one uh, for episode 218, Cat's Eye from Evil Genius. Evil Genius. <laughs> if only General had received that shining distress call from the Overlook Hotel, then poor Scatman Crothers might still be alive. Because you know, General is right is running right under the axe swing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. Thank you, Evil. I'm not picturing that. I just, I'm not getting it. But yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it, Evil. You don't have to explain. Okay. <laughs> Chad, <laughs> Lone Wolf about Cat's Eye. Okay, Lone Wolf says, Stephen King really had a fetish for cats, it seems. Oh, yeah. Pet Cemetery, Sleepwalkers, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, Cat's Eye, they all had cats. I think we can put General among the pantheon of badass pet heroes along with Clovis from Sleepwalkers and Thor from Bad Moon. Hmm. Saw Cat's Eye on TNT as a kid in the late 80s, and I remember thinking, wow, this Drew Mar Barrymore kid is so cute. <laughs> Her innocence works so well in this movie and E.T. This was also my first time seeing James Woods, who I would later see in Digstown and John Carpenter's Vampires. Hmm. Awesome movie. If you want to know why they call Stephen King the king of horror, look no further than the 80s. The man was unstoppable. Yeah, sure was. That. Thanks, he, 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 he did. And if you look in uh, in the back of uh, his nonfiction book, Dance Macabre, there's a list of books and movies. Cats are represented there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but those are not his. Uh, one of the books he points out is Feral, which is a oh. tiny, thin little book about wild cats running mm -hmm. amok. Uh, and then there's <laughs> a couple of movies. There's a couple of movies in there too that are that I haven't seen and I'm looking at them and going, oh, it's people trapped in a cabin and the cats attacked kind of thing. And I'm going, yeah, I like think a, you're right. Like a Cujo of right. cats? <laughs> it, kind of, kind of. That's my house uh, if we forget to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, two, on to Sleepaway Camp, number 219. Also from Evil Genius, Crystal. Oh, okay. um, for this one? Friday the 13th meets dressed to kill and when they met it was murder i'm sorry hey a tagline i should have yeah. read it before <laughs> before i said it that's actually that's actually a really good tagline um that's good job that's funny people. yeah 
I saw this on cable in the late 80s. Great movie. It's up on my list of favorites. I mean, yeah, that's good taste. Um, I think I disagree. Oh, I think I disagree. So this was only me that said this. I think I disagree that there were any comedic intentions in the movie. But I do feel that there was more of an attempt at surrealism, especially in the flashback sequences. Okay, I could see that. Yeah. I still feel like they had to try to be funny, but they didn't. So, you know... You're only disagreeing with me, which is not, uh, you know, who cares? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, they don't care. Um, looking forward to Akira. <laughs> very much a classic. And yes, I feel that it falls in the sci-fi horror. Great choice. Chad. Love Thank 80s you. anime. Excalibur 2, I feel, is within your purview. Oh, One evil. Of my favorite movies. We're every single time. Wow. <laughs> every single time it's my turn to pick a movie, I look to see if Excalibur is streaming. And every single time, my hopes are dashed. Oh, I, love I, that I would movie. pick it too. I love and that movie. To- as soon favorites. as it's available, it's it shoves out whatever choices I had and goes right to the top of the list. I yeah. love that. It's film. one of the, I think, I honestly think that was. It was one of my favorite movies of all mm-hmm. time, especially when I was a kid. I just remember being like, <gasps> and it's swimming in blood. So yeah, yeah it had some it's, creepy it's, stuff in it too. Yeah. It's beautiful. It did indeed. Um, Bill, Chad White on Sleepaway Camp. That last scene traumatized me when I was a kid. I watched this movie a few weeks back and I enjoyed it. That last scene is still so disturbing. Great show, everyone. Thanks, Chad. Um. I was traumatized as an adult when I saw it. <laughs> uh, Chad, Kathy Chapman, also Sleepaway Camp. Okay. Kathy says, not my favorite movie, but the ending is definitely memorable. The face and the rest of her is shocking. It stays yeah. with you for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The rest of her. The rest of her. That should have been the name of the movie. I see this as a study in child abuse and bullying. Yeah, very much. Very very much so. The poor kid didn't have a chance. And Crystal, as a teen in the early 80s, yep, that pretty much nailed the clothes. They sure (laughs) did. They sure did. Remember the Nair commercial, Who Wears Short Shorts? Well, it wasn't just the women. I do remember remember that. that. I do remember seeing that. Well, thanks for putting that back in our brain. I'm going to be going to sleep tonight. It's like, we wear short shorts. God dang. She said, well, it wasn't just the women. Thanks, Kathy. She just, the guys she were wearing, just, I wondered this. She just messed us all up. That's Kathy, right. That is so good. <laughs> the, half, the half shirts were killing me. The, yeah. little tank, the tank tops that were cut up above the guy's stomach was were killing me because I remember guys running around like that. And, of course, here we are. Jerry Chandler on Sleepaway Camp. Uh, Crystal, you ready oh, for yeah. this? Ah, Jerry. Hey. <clears throat> Nine years after this was released. Some, <laughs> see, I should read these before. Some second-rate art film totally ripped us off and got all the critic award and award love. Really? What did the crying game have that Sleepaway Camp didn't have? <laughs> well, the crying game didn't have her... Uh, as a murderer, like ah, she, she didn't. Well, yeah. And I, oh my god, a crying game, man. Had a penis though. Yep. Hey. I, I can't take that, that away from it. That movie jacked me up so bad. I was like, yeah. Oh. Oh, how did I? Oh, I was so far off base. I just remember thinking how hot she was. I was like, she's so hot. Oh. How do I feel about this? Uh, I don't know. The girl just, was something extra. Yeah, because when you think you're attracted to a girl, that's one thing. But when you, you know, it doesn't, now it doesn't matter. Anyway, okay. That's mm. enough, Crystal. Let's go. Let's get back to this. Okay. I'll back Bill's comments about summer camps. I did that one time. The kids in this film weren't horrible enough to realistically portray some kids. At <laughs> they weren't horrible enough? No, they yeah. were not horrible enough. <laughs> no, they were not horrible enough. Oh, God. Sleepaway Camp is an odd one. It was the late 90s before I saw it, and I was actually surprised there was more to it than the shock reveal at the end. Most of you, not Chad, covered most of the same thoughts I had when <laughs> I saw it. It's better than I thought it would be, and it deserves its place in horror history. 
but it's never going to be high on my list of favorites. It's still watchable and enjoyable enough. And I still recommend it to people who have only heard of it, but never seen it. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I feel like every horror movie lover has to watch Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. I don't care if you yeah. like oh, yeah. it or you yeah. don't. I think it's just, it's just, a, it's just, it's, it's one of those things you have yeah. to see. It's just, you have to see it to believe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has a, it has a, a underlying story that, and final scene that's not been matched i don't believe yeah Mm-mm. it's yeah. more than just that scene which is really what i thought the film it was is. all these mm-hmm. years and i was happy to be proven wrong yeah yeah all right thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks jerry thanks I jerry fall asleep thanks, that time. Lone uh, wolf. thanks chad <laughs> <sighs> thanks evil evil and uh, and Lady, Circle Lady Circle Woman, Circle Woman, three. Woman three. three, a oh, new commenter. We appreciate that very much. Hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, that's it for this episode. Everybody, that's, that's all. Please that's follow all. us. Please uh, like leave comments. Please subscribe. Share with your friends. We do have goals for subscribing, so you can help us out um, by doing so. Mm-hmm. All righty. So every two weeks, we do another episode focused on a film released between 1980 and 1989. Next up, we tackle one chosen by moi, and I pick Scanners from 1981. Another film with an iconic scene. Love (laughs) me some Scanners. It is the uh, best scene in the whole film. Never have been done. So HP, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, it's on HBO Max if you want to uh, catch up mm-hmm. uh, or the Criterion channel. Or there is a nice uh, Blu-ray from Criterion as well. Your collection must be insane, Jeff. He pretty oh, yeah. much gets everything that we watch and review. Well, I didn't. Like... So uh, just so people know, I lived my life the way my parents lived my, their life. I We did spend money on stuff. I saved. We mm. we skipped on almost everything we never bought a new car i don't know 2012 i think might have been the first new car we bought um and so now <laughs> what happened oh, i go eight, pu- i go eight you, you i feel like i feel like you guys have been eight. watching these movies all your life and i've got to like I got to buy the Blu-ray so I can catch up with you and listen <laughs> listen to the commentaries and all this other stuff. This is stuff, crazy. You, know? you live your whole life frugally, and then, you know, you get up there, and uh, it's like, God Monster of Indian Flats and a yeah. new DVD. I need that. Oh, one. my gosh. Blackenstein? <laughs> yeah. Ape? God Blackenstein. <laughs> oh, my God. And remember, he doesn't just do this show. He does uh, uh, the other yeah, DVDs, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I first thing I do when you guys pick one is look to see if there's a Blu-ray and if it's uh, what the extras are. If yeah. Dead, who put them out? So anyway, um, it's fun, <laughs> you know. I think it's keeps, awesome. Yeah. Keeps me I out of the bars. That, yeah. This is cheap, my <laughs> cheap entertainment. Oh this yeah. This is what I do because we would be so worried about you, Jeff, going well, to bars if, and whooping it up. Whoop. This whoop, is whoop. my version of. The wood shop in the garage or the basement, you know, where you're making yep. people, everybody yeah. furniture that nobody wants. or You're less likely to cut uh, your thumb off accidentally <laughs> doing this. That's yeah. right. Most of the woodworkers I know are missing at least one joint from one finger. Yeah. And, and yet they've got all kinds of advice. Anyway, <laughs> this is, this is. Just like Jeff. Yeah. I, I wish there would have been a way to do this and make money earlier in my life, but okay. Mm. Yeah. Here we are and I'm having a blast. And I love talking about this stuff with you guys. So me too. Ditto. And there's no there better time are. like the president. You know what? That's this right. Is yeah. the best time. Well, I miss I miss seeing you guys uh until we till we meet again. And I, okay. I forgot this was the exit music for uh Chad Lines with Tag. Okay. <laughs> what the heck was that? Was that like a Bugs Bunny or yeah. Sounds like uh, it was cartoon. Fred Flintstone running. Yeah, it was Fred, oh. Fred Flintstone. Oh, I hear it. Okay, okay. Okay, I hear it. Pew! Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Fast for a big man. Thank you all so much and say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>